All right, we're going to continue with assignment eight and where we left off. I was working on finalizing the black type design. And in order to do that, I had layered up a rasterized version of the type. So combining and rasterizing. This was my final type. And then it, once you rasterize it and combine it, you can do different things like cutting parts out of it. And what I did was offset it. So there's a little bit more movement. And then I make little tweaks, add another offset there, angle that O there a little bit and give it a little offset. And the most important thing, a lot like logo design, is just to make sure you're happy with the black shapes to begin with. So there's a little bit there that can be cleaned up. So what layers you're using, which ones you're not using. Come on. And then you're looking at the whole thing. It's good to get some time. I haven't worked on this since our last class. So I see that for consistency, I have a lot of doubles here, but I've cleaned out the bottom in the offset. So I want to clean out the bottom of this offset. So I'm going to use my move tool and say auto select to find the layer that that's on. And it's all combined onto this layer, so that means I'm going to be a little more careful. I'm going to use my polygonal lasso tool. And because it's rasterized and no longer just a type tool, no longer a vector, I can just cut it out. Went too far. So I haven't used the polygonal lasso much in this class, but for type design, especially with lots of straight lines, it's a whole lot easier than trying to freehand it. And I'm not going for perfection, I'm going for something that looks a little more hand done in typeset because I don't want it to look cold, right? But that's what I'm going for. And then once I'm happy with the black type, I want to combine that all into one asset. So what I can do is take all of these different folders and just clean it up. So I have my blocking sketch and I have my final black type that I'm gonna combine all into one layer just by selecting all that are turned on to give me my final black type at the right resolution and then say layer merge layers. Because my hope is to keep this poster at a reasonable print resolution. So right now it's 9 by 12 inches by 350 pixels per inch. And that's what I'd like to keep it at. It's not a huge poster size print like we would be able to do in the lab, but it is very respectable and shouldn't hopefully uh, destroy <laughs> PhotoP, keep it from running as I build up a background and build up textures and color variations. So now I have my final type. And it took, you know, several iterations 
of using first just the vector type tools to typeset it, and then duplicating them and rasterizing them to get the individual effects I wanted. Cutting away, um, layering over, and if you remember the, um, the type tools I originally used, the typefaces I downloaded from Defont, even though those were 100% free to use, I, I hope that I have customized them and made them unique to my own purpose uh, adequately so I don't feel like I'm just trading on someone else's work. And type is just as important in this assignment as your illustration. You know, you want it, it to read not just as something that's an afterthought. Okay, so I have my final type. Now, of course, I get to do the, the next part of the assignment, which is to try to do a color variation on that type. Right, much like we did with our logos. A black shape version and then a color variant. So I'm going to duplicate that final type. And on that copy, I can just try some simple things. Now, in order to see the color variants, I'm going to go to my blank white layer and I'm going to duplicate it twice. And on the top one, I'm going to fill it with black. And that's because my sketch is at 71%. That's why I'm getting that haze. Here, I kind of like the sketch being there. So let's take care of it this way. I'm going to use my magic wand. I'm going to select with contiguous turned on the space around my illustration. And then I'm going to delete that away from my sketch layer by rasterizing it. And all I'm doing is using my sketch to kind of diminish the uh, focal point of my spot illustration for the moment. Because I really want to focus on the effectiveness of the type. OK. So I've got a blank layer. Behind that, I'm going to put and fill it with a gray layer. Because if I can get the type to work on black, gray, and white, then I know I, I have full options for a background for my poster. Just like for our spot illustrations and for you know different t-shirt colors or different contexts for it. So it works OK on gray, just as solid black. It works fine on white, probably looks the best, just solid black on white. But of course on black, it looks terrible. You can't see it at all. So for the first thing I'll do for my final type copy is add something to, to showcase the black type on a dark background. And so this is an offset, but it's a different type of offset. It's an offset of a different color, right? So the traditional way I would do this is with a stroke. And of course, I'm doing color variations here. Come on. But you can also just change your color of your stroke to pure white. It's a good place to start. It's going to be kind of methodical here. I'm going to set the stroke to be outside. of my image, right? And then I get to decide on how thick it is. And I don't think I want it too thick. I'm not sure I want the strokes running into each other, but I want it to still be readable. So let me zoom in on it a little bit. And I don't like how it's touching there, the white strokes. 
and they're definitely overlapping there and there's a little bump I don't like there that I can fix. So take it down maybe to 16. Let's try 12. Try 10. Yeah, so now it's just barely, barely, barely touching, but still pretty visible. Okay, now this is what can happen sometimes when you output layer styles. Because this is the computer just working off of your black line. And then there's a little pixel there, a tiny little black pixel that somehow got left there. And so in order to get rid of that in the stroke, which makes it really obvious, I just need to get rid of it in the underlying layer. And then I should smooth it out. So this is why we want free floating type just like we want free floating uh, spot illustrations. So we can play with these layer styles. Okay, the next thing I can play with and I'm going to do this really methodically. I'm going to make another duplicate of my final type. You know, with Command J. So I'll have Copy 2. And then I'm going to play with the effects differently here. I'm going to turn off the stroke. And now I'm going to play with, though I still see it because I have the layer underneath showing it, and I'm going to play with a color overlay. And I'm going to pick something that I think would kind of work for tattoos. And then I'm going to take its opacity down. Not so that the black shows through, which is what's happening now, but so that I can also add a gradient overlay. And my gradient overlay, I'm going to start playing with the color quite a bit. Let's see, what, what might I like? I want it to look kind of like old tattoos, so that's pretty nice. Going warm to cool. But then I can play with the blending mode a little bit. And maybe I want it to be a little bit more subtle using pin light. So right now, I have these two things overlapping. If just the gradient overlay, it's way too strong, but then I have the color overlay over that which mutes it a little bit, and I have the stroke, which turned on or off is helping it show up against the black. Now I'm going to duplicate it again, and I'm going to show you some, some effects we haven't played with so far. So I'm going to turn off the color overlay, turn off the gradient overlay, and so it's filling it in with black. Actually, I'll keep the both of those on because I want I want that. But now, let's add some more. I'm going to add what's called an inner glow. And so the inner glow, if I can zoom in so you can see as it previews. Try to show you on the eye. So the inner glow is going to soften the inside of where the white stroke is, right? And I want to make it noisy. I want this to look less digital. I want it to look more like hand-done coloring. And I want to spread it out a little bit more. This is not embossing, because this will do the same on all sides. That's good. I want it to jitter, meaning that it's not going to be always the exact same. It's going to kind of randomly change its shape a little bit. 